थैंक यू नवीन थैंक यू नवीन एंड रिक्वेस्ट फ्रॉम ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स लाइक वाइल नैरेटिंग और वाइल से आई मे assume many times that you all know but in case you have not understood anything kindly do write in the chat box we'll again uh, repeat the concept because i was just observing yesterday's breakout room and uh, i i forgot to tell few commands uh, which was uh, like told later so if you are uh, any if in case of any ambiguity you can definitely type on the chat box and we will try to resolve the same so today's session since uh, we have uh, shared the video also and uh, the presentations today session i will briefly narrate the yesterday session summarize it show the commands and then we will go to the breakout room practice on simple linear regression first and then i will tell about the multiple linear regression in the multiple linear regression there are many types of multiple linear regression today's session we will focus on the standard multiple linear regression but for people who are interested i'll be telling the weighted least square regression also so uh, let's start today's session so today we have uh, discussed the concept of all the assumptions and again i want to reiterate that uh, assumption testing is very important in case of a linear regression in case of any modeling because actually you are making the predictions the more your robust the model is the more accurate prediction will be and if you satisfy all the assumptions then there will be a high chance that your model will be very accurate so this was the data set and uh, we discussed many assumptions i'll go to this anal analysis and i'll show you so this is the regression and this is the window for the linear regression and yesterday we have taken the dependent variable as cholesterol and independent variable as bmi you can see here since uh, there is only one window here in case of a jam movie if you go to the spss you will find that there are two like there is a uh, linear regression and the spss interface is a little bit different from the jam movie here you can see you have to enter all the variable which are scale variable can you see a sign here of scale so this is the continuous in nature which is the covariate and the factors would be categorical so this is like a categorical we will use this in case of a standard multiple regression so once you move these two you will find a r value and a r square since there is only one predictor variable here so there will be only one model and the model coefficient if you see this r is the correlation coefficient the r square is the coefficient of determination that means how to interpret this i can say that 17% of the variance in cholesterol is due to this bmi then again if i come down i am leaving this weights and factor option for now this model builder option will be used in the standard multiple regression because there you have to keep on adding variable and seeing the value of r square whether it is increasing or it is at the same level this is the reference level this is again used when the there are factors in this box so since i have no categorical variable right now because in simple linear regression the assumption is there should be one independent variable which is continuous and the dependent variable should also be continuous now coming to this option of assumptions check i i have to see now about all the assumptions so we have discussed about this auto correlation so now what is auto correlation we discussed this yesterday but i will discuss this auto correlation first what is this auto correlation
This is basically multicollinearity is there, yes. So you can see that uh, what do we mean by autocorrelation? We discussed yesterday that autocorrelation is in uh, basically in context of a dependent variable. In case of this example, this example was like, I have to predict cholesterol based on the BMI value. So my dependent variable is cholesterol. So the problem of autocorrelation will not happen here. Why? Because it is not subjective. A machine is measuring the cholesterol and it is not a study design issue. But this autocorrelation problem is a study design issue. How? We'll see how, what is this autocorrelation? So suppose if I am the examiner, like I'm checking the paper, all of you at one point of time, you do correct the paper and give the assess the paper, means the exam paper and give the marks. So if like I'm continuously marking 100 students and these are the marks out of 100 of the initial 20 students. So what generally we do in the start, we are generally a little tight in giving the marks. And then as the time progresses and as we become more comfortable, there's a tendency to give more marks. And in the medical education, this is also known as the halo effect, like uh, halo and anti-halo. I'm not discussing those points. So here it's a, you will see that initially I have given a mark 70, then 75. And then once I have given this fifth number student 82 marks, again, my marking is like 80, 85, 90. Then again, if I hit 90, then you can see most of the marks is in 90s. Similarly, so similarly, you can see once again, if in this 15 number student, if I have given 71, then again, my most of the marks are in 76 or 74 in 70s. So you can see that these are the, these values, the, these are correlated. And this is known as the autocorrelation. So whenever there is a subjectivity in the measurement, and there's one more example of this autocorrelation. Suppose if I am starting, uh, I am interviewing a person based on a scale, and that scale is probably is a Likert scale. I'm, uh, you know, evaluating a person on quality of life. So initially for 10, 15, 20 people, I might not be very comfortable in taking interview and I'm also practicing. So my like uh, assessment of score will not be that accurate. But as I move ahead and if like uh, I interview approximately 100 people, so the after 25 subjects, my accuracy will increase. So in my initial values will be very much similar and then my later values will be very much similar. So this is known as the autocorrelation means the values are so close initially or maybe during the later part that they are correlated with each other. And there is a statistics which is known as the Durbin Watson statistics. The value should be up till two. And this should be interpreted only if you think that there is uh, going to be a problem. In this case, like if your dependent variable is something where there is no issue of subjectivity, like in this case, cholesterol. Cholesterol will be measured on the machine. So there is no uh, issue of a person measuring or doing the same. So you may skip this autocorrelation. And this is only applicable if you are anticipating any such values in your data, in your dependent variable. So this, how does this autocorrelation affects multiple regression? So remember, we have discussed this regression in terms of there is a regression coefficient and then there is an intercept. So basically, this creates a bias in the coefficient estimates and even the p-value and standard error that will be affected if there is an autocorrelation. So that's the significance of the autocorrelation. So if I go to the JMOV, uh, So I was telling you regarding this autocorrelation. So I will not click uh, this autocorrelation here, but just for demo, you can click and check. So the value of this Durbin Watson statistics is 0 0.04. So if it is 0 0.04, that means it is there is no issue of this uh, 
autocorrelation. So Dr. Mahendar is asking any example. So I've just given the example of autocorrelation. Uh, did you join late Dr. Mahendar or should I cite any other example apart from that marks yeah, and quality of life uh, score? Ma'am, you said just that cholesterol, uh, with, there is no issue of autocorrelation like that. Uh, any example ke dirje... yeah 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 the example was i just uh, uh, cited that uh, if you are checking marks of uh, students then initially your ma whatever marks you are giving you will be a little conservative in giving marks so initial 10 students you might like give less than 70 and then as you go ahead you might increase the leniency and you might be lenient in giving marks so the later students they will be having a better marks and those will be correlated. The initial 10 students might have less marks as compared to the later. So these initial 10 will be correlated. This is one example. Another example I gave like if I am measuring anxiety level or depression level of any person using a scale and that person is not uh, literate enough so that he will not, uh, it is not a self-administered. So I am taking the interview and if it is on a five point Likert scale, I'll give you my example. So during my PG, uh, one of my, uh, like uh, I was taking a data uh, for a quality, you all, um, many of you have done this quality of life. Uh, that is the WHO breath scale. So that was a 26 questionnaire. When I started taking the interview, it was because the patients were very literate and the that uh, tool I was using on the tuberculosis patients, category one and two. So whenever I was asking, how do you feel? So it was, many of you have seen that uh, Hindi version. So that Hindi is not very easy to understand. So I used to read that sentence and whenever I used to ask the person, how do you rate yourself? So it is like like a scale, uh, disagree, agree, highly disagree and those sort of thing. So the patient used to say, madam, what are you asking? I'm not getting anything. Whatever you think you mark that. So I was very confused. How can I mark on my own? But I am like, I tried to give them few scenarios and then they were like saying a uh, few scores and I used to measure that. But as I moved, then I learned the technique of asking the questions. So my initial 10, 15 interviews were not like I was very uh, giving all those like the middle score, like three, three, three. Later, when I was uh, having a lot of experience in tackling those people and then getting to know how I have, uh, how I can get those answers, then my scoring pattern improved. Means, I mean, I was more accurate and precise in giving that uh, uh, highly agree or highly disagree or maybe those extreme scores started coming. So then I, I could correlate now that that was an example of Autocorrelation because the initial 10 patients. Okay, Dr. Basundara is also writing this happened with us in one of the recent projects on stress level assessment. Yes, Dr. Basundara, those of you who have taken you very well correlate and echo with my uh, experience that that happens in any question. That's why we say that initial 10 15, you should do the pre and pilot testing to be comfortable so that you can carry on uh, further. So one more thing to uh, say here that if you enter those individual in a serial wise manner, then only you can detect this pattern. What I mean to say, if I have like given a serial number of patient one as one, two, three and four, then only you can detect this pattern. If I merge all the questionnaire randomly and then I have entered the data, then you cannot see the pattern because now my serial number of interviews doesn't coincide with the way I took the interview. Are you getting, am I making myself clear? Like if on day one, I took interview of five patients, on day two, I took interview of the next five patients. So if I have entered data like this, one, two, three, four, five today, and then next day again, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If I have entered it serially, then only the software can detect autocorrelation. If like I, I don't want to enter it now and I have completed data for 100 patients and now I have like uh, randomly I have given it to some person to make that data entry and then he is entering the data, then it will not be the way the, uh, the way I have taken the interview serially. So then the problem of autocorrelation will not be detected actually. Then this Durban Watson statistics has got 
no role. So if you are clear on this, then uh, uh, like uh, you can understand uh, this problem of autocorrelation. And again, what does it do basically? So it, the, it, it changes the coefficient and again, it changes the standard error and p-value also. So there, the your prediction equation which you are or the linear regression equation which you are making that will not be very much accurate. So uh, do you agree? Um, have you understood Dr. Mahinder? And Dr. Damini is asking one question, autocorrelation in a sequence of pattern. Yes, that can be detected. Agree. It is in the sequence. So if you, the way you are taking the interview, and again, I said that it is a data, it is a uh, study design issue. So if there is a single uh, person, then there are less chances. If there are multiple people taking the same interview, then it is going, again, it is uh, very much uh, like uh, this problem is going to happen. That's why we always emphasize like you train, there should be only one person taking such interview where you can expect some variations, subjective variations. And then you train the person and you ask him repeatedly how you are going to take. So later, maybe during our PG time, we are not sensitive enough for these things because, you know, we had to just complete our work and submit it. So I also, I was like, I was not knowing these things and I did it. But later when I am reading now, then I can, I can correlate like what mistakes did I do at that point of time. So these things and that time too, we were not very much uh, literate in all these analytical techniques also. But currently, if, if you uh, expect such things, you can uh, do it uh, and you can detect it also. But again, like I said that if you, your, and this is in context of the dependent variable. So if your dependent variable is something which is uh, like a machine dependent or which is not dependent on a person or a subject, then you don't need to uh, check this assumption. Am I, uh, have you all understood? So Durbin Watson test modify p-value. Yes, it modifies p-value also. So Bharat, Bharat is writing, we want to eliminate any trend that occurs. Dr. Shamshad, can you show me that uh, chat? It, it is disappearing here. Yeah. Thank you. So we want to eliminate any trend that occurs with time. Yes. Agree. So that's why we say that you have to perform if like what to do now. If your data is having this problem, what is the solution? So solution is basically there is there are other methods. Then you cannot apply this linear regression model. Then there is something known as the generalized uh, least square regression that you can do. Or there is another method, which is the time series method that you can do. So Damini is writing human error like interviewer one, two, three. Yes, because the one person, if like if you are measuring, if you are uh, like getting this blood pressure measured, if one person is measuring and you have trained enough, then there are less chances. But if three people are measuring, one person might tie their uh, cuff very tightly or loosely keeping the arm not at uh, like heart level. So those minute things, if he is not taking care, like inter-observer variation, what we say. So that's why if there are inter-observer variations, then it is likely to happen that one person values will be correlated as compared to the other. So yes, uh, Dr. Shraddha, the value of this Durban Watson statistics should be up till two, two. It is 0 0.04. Uh, it, if uh, we can have at least up till 2, its value should not be more than 2. So autocorrelation here is the correlation coefficient value. So less value likely to be correlated. Okay, Ria is uh, uh, again putting his view, her views. So uh, if you are clear on this, now I am not telling you currently this collinear uh, collinearity diagnostic because this happens when you have got more than one independent variable. Since here there is only one independent, uh, independent variable, I am not going. And Damini is saying, is there any ideal range? Up till two. Generally, it doesn't have a 
minus or plus range it ranges between 0 to 4 there is no minus value and we can tolerate up till 2 that's the uh, uh, given by the LERD which is the reference for this so coming to the normality testing we have discussed this uh, normality testing yesterday regarding that Shapiro will can sample size. So I'm not clicking this because the sample size here is larger than 50. QQ plot of residuals, this is used to check for the homoscedasticity. So what is homoscedasticity? As you move ahead, the variance, we have discussed the concept of variance yesterday. So the variance of the residual should be same throughout the value of the predictor variable. So if you see this, if I click this, this is QQ plot of residual, which is showing that it is approximately normally distributed because it is to a, on this diagonal line, majority of the data points are on the diagonal line. And this residual, if you see, you can see that it's random. You cannot decipher any pattern. So you can say that it is the, this uh, homoscedasticity is met. In this case, we see the pattern that it should be random. You cannot make out that there is a funneling or there is a fan-like shape or something like that. So this is the residual pop, uh, plot and then coming to Cook's distance. So we, uh, can you recall, we discussed yesterday three concepts. Like there is a outlier, there is a leverage value and there is an influential point. So outlier is a term when the value of residual, the uh, standardized residual is more, we call it as an outlier. But how, and then what is a leverage? Leverage is something which is like initially, it is away from most of the other observation. Like in this case, if you see, I can say that this probably this point, can you see this point? This point is a little away from all and the other point. It is lying like in isolation. Here also you can say this point is lying in isolation. So such point which lies in isolation, of course you cannot make out, you can just pinpoint here. Again, you will have to go back to your data set and see. And how we can do that, that we'll see. So it is important to check for these because these again, it is dependent that that will affect your regression coefficient and its significance also. So you see this Cook's distance and if you click this Cook's distance, it will give you a Cook's distance mean, median and the standard, this range minimum and uh, maximum and standard deviation. So you can see that the mean Cook's distance here is the 0 0.01. So it is less than one. That's why it is, the, we want this Cook's distance till one not more than one. So if it is 0 0.01, that is okay. But if it is more than that, then we will have to go and check. So I just want to demonstrate this Cook's distance with one more data set. And I'll just show you. Yes. So this was the data set for the Cook's distance. I will, because I am no, I cannot perform here the multiple so like if uh, on the basis of uh, exercise hours, if I want to predict this linear regression, so you can see here, it is taking some time. So you can see here, if I click the Cook's distance, again Cook's distance is point 0.1 here. But if I put a uh, weight, another variable. Okay, then I don't need to, okay. 
So Dr. Shamshad is saying that I am going into the multiple regression. So let's leave it for now. Probably, yes, you are right because then you will be confused. I'll demonstrate this once I have told you the many variables. So right now, because we are restricted to the single variable, so I'm leaving this concept for now. But this here, you can again, how if you like, if you find this value more than one, then you can go to this save option. And in save option, if you click this Cook's distance, then you will have the Cook's distance for all, every individual data. And if you see this data set, you can see that this Cook's distance that is appearing here. And you can see the data set and check. In this case, it is a large value, but you can check this Cook's, Cook's distance. And if any distance, any variable, if it is more than one, then you can uh, put a filter on that variable and try performing analysis without that. But in this case, since it is not there, that's why I am not going into checking that assumption because Cook's distance is less than one. So this was uh, the thing. And then coming to the model coefficient, this model coefficient would be like uh, I want that value of ANOVA and then estimate and it's 95% confidence interval. So you can see this. This is the F value and this is so overall model is uh, significant. And then how we will make the, that we discussed yesterday, how to make an equation. So equation will be like this intercept plus 4.28 into BMI. And this is a significant predictor variable. So this overall process, when you have one independent variable, this is also known as the uh, like uh, unadjusted uh, linear regression or this is the unadjusted beta. So there is a univari univariable and the multivariable. So this is since only we have taken one variable. So just this is unadjusted. And then when you have got multiple variable, then it is the adjusted one. That we will see with the standard multiple regression. So if it is clear, then I have shown yesterday also how do we write the interpretation. So interpretation, we discussed that you have to write all the assumptions also, whatever you have done. So this we have written, scatter plot, we have uh, plotted and seen the linearity. And then we have seen the normality and homoscedasticity that is also met. And then this was the equation. And then we can write that one unit of increase in BMI leads to 4.3 unit increase, millimole increase in the cholesterol concentration. So this is how we perform the simple linear regression. So Dr. Rajesh is asking what is the difference between the estimate and standardized estimate. Okay. So basically yesterday we discussed, like right now you have got only one variable. So that's why standardized is not needed. But if I have like along with BMI, if I have the systolic blood pressure, if I have the weight, then what will happen? The unit of weight is kg. The unit of BMI is in kg per meter square. And maybe if you have systolic blood pressure, it is in millimeter of mercury. You might have few more variables. Then in that means like uh, exercise number of hours of exercise in a week, predicting the cholesterol level, blood sugar level. So these unit of all these will be different. So this estimate which you are seeing here, that is the unstandardized. And we use this. Okay. So Cook's distance, uh, I will uh, deal with this more in the uh, multiple regression, Dr. Shelley. Uh, you just hold, uh, there is uh, no, uh, the, the example I will show you actually how this Cook's distance is affecting our linear regression. But since for Cook, Cook's distance, I will have to be entering more variable. That why, that's why I'm not doing it now. Once you are back from the break, breakout room, I'll show it. So this uh, variable is the unstandardized. Now, if, because Anything yesterday we I was discussing anything which you want to make it like I can compare the distance 
then you can for a relative comparison what you do you standardize that so when you standardize that it is known as the standardized estimate so if i click that standardized estimate there will again appear a standardized coefficient and that is a little lower than that so this is the estimate and this is the standardized estimate it is 0.41 so this is slightly this is uh, different uh, in context of this so generally for making equation we use this unstandardized one and in multiple linear regression when you I have more variable then you can compare using this standardized estimate which has got more weightage in the deciding this variance so that we can decide based on the standardized estimate and is in the standardized estimate like how will you write this you will write that when you when the BMI is increased by one unit, the cholesterol will increase by 4.28. Well, how do you interpret this? Here you write when BMI will increase by one SD, then your cholesterol will increase by 0.41 SD. So that we talk in terms of standard uh, standardized estimate. So that's the difference between the standardized and unstandardized. Dr. Shamshad, can you please show me the comments? Uh, and then, uh, uh, yes, I can you please move that? So, ANOVA is, uh, give some example of Cook's distance that I have reserved for the multiple linear regression. I will tell that. What is the difference between the estimate and the standardized estimate and when to use them? I have told this, Dr. Rajesh. Have you understood, Dr. Rajesh, the difference between the unstandardized and standardized? And then Dr. Bharat, uh, I, I let me see your yes. And then Dr. Bharat is asking, in the residual plot, we have to only rule out funneling. Yes. If there is no pattern, you can say that the, the homosodasticity uh, assumption is met. Then Dr. Girish is asking, ANOVA is done for more than two variables. Yes, agree. That is the for if you want to check the mean in that case. Here in this case, any variance, this analysis of variance, Whenever there is a variance in the variable, this ANOVA is there. So you will find this ANOVA in logistic regression, in linear regression, and in many other modeling because the model fit is decided by the ANOVA because it, it calculates the variance. And then the Dhamini is telling the Cook's distance. So Cook's distance, yes, I will tell. I told that I will tell you the Cook's distance with the uh, demonstrating one example. So just uh, hold for some time while looking at the F value here. Because F value, actually, I said that the this is again, remember, we discussed the variance, the variance of residual. So this F value is for the model fitting. If I go up, this value, basically, this is the how this value has come. So this is uh, like the, this value divided by this value. This is how the value of F comes. So it is the. Uh, like a variance uh, ratio of the two variances and this value gives because based on this value your model coefficient the significance of your model coefficient comes that's why the value of ANOVA is important here then only you can say that whether your prediction of uh, like whatever model you are predicting whether it is significant or not so have you understood Dr. Priyanka this F value this is the uh, ratio of mean square of this BMI and the residual and that's the F value and based on F value it decides about this P value of this model. Yes and then uh, yes you have written correctly Dr. Shraddha mean square of uh, BMI by uh, this residual and then I can see and then you can see here that the value here of this residual is very high. Because uh, it is approximately, if you see, 1, 2, 3, 47 lakhs. No, 4 lakhs, 71,000. And here it is 9,000. So you can see, uh, sorry, 94,000. So you can see that's why the residuals are very large. And that's why the R square value is 17% or so. It is only explaining the 17% of the variation. So that's why the... Sum of square means that variance of this residual is very high. And then next question, fanning. One, someone has asked regarding fanning. 
So Bharat, yes, I have told you like funneling, fanning, if there is no pattern, then you can say that homoscedasticity assumption is met. So if there are no more questions, then we may go to the breakout room and the, that data sheet has been shared to you and its name is with the practice session. So you open that data sheet, open the question, do it one by one and then show it to your mentors. And if any concepts are not clear, then you may ask there also and you may ask in the main room here also. It is up to you. But do it and then once you are comfortable with one variable, then we'll go to the more than one variable. And in that context, the question of Cook's distance, which I have not told you currently, I will do it elaborately. Okay. So, Dr. Navi, 